burned. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. <laughs> you know, Max, sneaking the bug into that exorcism was an uncharacteristic stroke of genius. Demonic possession is the gift that keeps on giving. What? Oh, Commissioner. Uh, no, that was, uh, Max's aunt. Yes, 14 packs a day. What's that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes? No. Yes? Sweet suffering Saint Sebastian on the sousaphone in a short story by Susan Sontag. We're on our way. What? Let me guess. Our friendly neighborhood demon just burnt down another monastery. No, Max, we have a far more bloodthirsty adversary this time. The President of the United States of America. Who? The man's gone nuts. He's enacting all kinds of crazy new laws. What else is new? Federally mandated group hugs before, during, and after all major sporting events. So? He's curtailing civil liberties, threatening the environment. Hey, that makes three of us. And he's about to introduce mandatory gun registration. Get the keys. Greetings, travelers. Welcome back to Sam Max. And I'm sorry to say. Hold on a second. Greetings, travelers. Welcome to Sam and Max. Abe Lincoln must die! I have to point out, Sam, that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you just let me drive. And I have to point out that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you hadn't jumped on my head shouting Jersey Devil, Jersey Devil and firing your gun out the window. I swear that woman was a dead ringer for him. Well, here we are, standing in an open field west of the White House. Let's go bring the hammer down on that so-called commander-in-chief. Okay, a few things we gotta do. Oh, gotta lower you. Eh, whatever. Okay, that'll do. So, good news, bad news, or more good news, depending on those who like this series or not. Um, good news, another Sam and Max game. Or the bad news, uh, uh, let's try this again, because I think I said it in the wrong order. Bad news, this is not the last episode of Sam and Max for this season. Apparently season one has six episodes, while seasons two and three have five episodes each. I thought it was three sets of four. I was a bit off. The good news is, well, lots more Sam and Max for you guys. But, I promise you guys, after I'm done with Sam and Max, I have a fun little series that... I have a fun game that I want to play for this, and... I don't know how long we are till the end of Agents of Mayhem, but I have a good featured game that I'm really looking forward to playing. People have played it. It's been played to death. Came out years ago. But that's me. I play games way too late. So, let's see. Flag. Or what does that say? Oh, that's a clag. At least the president has his priorities straight. I, I feel like this is like... Them seeing the future. What does this say? Please do not feed the submarine. What can you feed a submarine anyway? Nothing. Weren't you listening? Boxing hey, glove. Hey, my missing boxing glove. It's always in the last place you look. What the fuck was it doing all the way here? The White House pool. Most secure waiting pool on Earth. Why is Jimmy Two Teeth here? Jimmy? Oh, great. What are you guys doing here? Oh, just saving the world. What are you doing here? I happen to take my vacations at the White House, and I needed a little R&R. &R. Speaking of which, beat it. Okay. 
The less I have to deal with you, the better. Oh my god. You know, knowing this game, there would be a freaking secret item back here that you need. Valet parking, two dollars. Valet parking, two dollars. Way to knock down that deficit. Pay phone. Hey, this phone only takes Susan B. Anthony dollars. It must be one of those stupid 555 phones. Yes, actually. 555-1984. Hey, Sam! Did I ever mention how I've memorized pi to 1,000 decimal places? It's 3.14159265358979. do you have a piece of paper handy? You want to write down the phone number? I remember the number. I want to write myself a reminder to smother you with a pillow in your sleep. <laughs> Suspect yourself. That's so Madonna. Post no bills. I'm surprised this sign survived the Clinton administration. All I'm wondering is how the hell is Abe Lincoln president again? Your name here. For naming rights to this building, please contact the Office of Desperation Accounting. Oh boy! Can we, Sam? Please? No. We'll see, little buddy. Uh, presidential storage? Hmm. White paint, Christmas lights, and a small barbecue. Everything somebody would need to renovate, decorate, and then accidentally burn the place to the ground. Later, Max. Later. And mailbox. There is a small mailbox here. Ah, uh, it's one of those ornamental mailboxes that doesn't actually open. Well, that's government efficiency for you. And DeSetto? Where are we going, Sam? Oh, back to the office. I don't want to go back to the office. No place. Never mind. We may be going nowhere, but at least we're making good time. Part of me was hoping, like, please let this be one of those level, one of those episodes where it's like you're in new areas and it's like not just the office, but whatever. Step aside, buddy. Freelance police. Just a moment, sir. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Possible situation at the front door. Talking dog and der, rabbit trying to gain access to the OO. Please advise, over. Super Bowl? Yeah, that's a negative on the access permission, sir. I'll have to ask you and your little friend to step away from the White House. Doggy Daddy, this is Loose Cannon. Request permission to pants this goon. Over. Before we try physical violence, Max, let's try dazzling the man with our razor-sharp wit and labyrinthine logical conundrums. Ah, emotional violence. Good plan. Uh... I was going to try just pulling a gun on him to see what happens, but sure. Let us in, pal. We're freelance police, here to save the president. I thought we were here to stop the president by any means necessary. I was going to wait to mention that part, Max. Either way, sir, you can't get inside. Orders. Seriously, let us in. Seriously, Jack. Let us in. It's a national emergency. No can do, sir. Hmm. It's going to be tougher than I thought to trick this goon and get inside. I heard that, sir. And it's going to be impossible. Hey, no fair. You're not supposed to listen to casual asides. It's in the job description, sir. Report <laughs> all stage whispers, soliloquies, and casual asides to the proper authorities. Curse them! They've thought of everything! <laughs> the security force in the world, sir. Oh my god. I'm glad that this game is actually, like, talking about that shit. Don't you get bored guarding this door? It's a rewarding job, sir. Doing my part. Keeping the president safe. Hey, Super Bowl! I'd like you to smell these two handkerchiefs and tell me which one smells more like chloroform. <laughs> no, Max. Is that all you do? Guard this door? That's my primary assignment, sir. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Try to guess it while I drop increasingly heavy weights near your head. What's your secondary assignment? Varies. Receptionist, maintenance, light grounds work, public relations. Public relations? I'm a people person, sir. They have you guys doing odd jobs, too? Cut back, sir. Employee Reduction and Consolidation Act of 2003. These sunglasses aren't cheap. Hey, Super Bowl! What gauge syringe would be best for injecting you with a knockout serum? Just a hypothetical. You really have time to do everything else and guard this door? I make the time, sir. It's what I do. Uh... Did you call yourself Super Bowl? Did you call yourself Super Bowl? Codename, sir. I'm a bouncer. Secret Service humor. And who's eh. Papa Bear? Section Chief. Runs the operation. Protects the president. Oh! Super Bowl. I get it! <laughs> I want to talk to your manager. 
No can do, sir. He's with the president. Hmm. Okay. I've had enough of this. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Perp's exiting Zone 4 now. Seem disgruntled. Stay on the lookout. Over. Now can we push him down and beat him with sewage-filled garbage bags until he runs crying into the reflecting pool? Tempting, Max, but these Secret Service guys hold a grudge. Okay, what do I have on me? Boxing glove? Assaulting armed Secret Service agents is one of the leading causes of getting yourself killed. Yeah? That would hardly be sporting. That would hardly be sporting. And the bug? I can do it. And let's just pick it up. Okay, here's what he said. Just step away from the door, please. Yes, sir, that is all I say. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for letting me know that so I don't have to keep trying over and over. Alright, well, let's go back to the office, see if we can find anything from Sybil or Where are we going, Bosco. Sam? Back to the office. I'll drive! Not while I'm alive. Exactly! Alright. Let's start with Sybil. See what her new job is. I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to be a witness anymore. Dating service? Oh, God. Uh, let's, oh. Oh, I get it. It's got the thing. Uh, meal graph is still the same. Tabloid is still the same. Anything in the closet? That's where I do video intros for my dating service. Why is the door locked? It's locked? Damn it. I don't even have a key to that door. Well, it tells me I need to find a key somewhere. And, um... Oh, wait. Hold on. Didn't work. Even with hacks. Alright, let's talk to Sybil. Hey, Sybil. What's new in the world of frequent random career reassessment? Hi, fellas. I'm really excited. I found the perfect job for me. You don't say. That's right. I, Sybil Pandemic, am now a professional matchmaker. I thought I smelled phosphorus. I thought I smelled that joke coming down the turnpike, burning oil and dragging its muffler. It's a dating service, Max. I figured that if a smart, successful career woman like me could be having so much trouble finding a date, there must be plenty of other people who could use help. That... that's not how it works. <laughs> You're having trouble finding your soulmate? You don't know the half of it. It seems like all the guys I meet are total losers. No offense. None taken. Hey! Or else they're borderline psychopaths. No offense. None taken! It's the borderline cases you have to watch out for. Mm. What kind of man are you looking for? Older men. Guys with a little history to them are such a turn on. Oh, and tall men. And distinguished. And he should be experienced. <laughs> All right, enough already. Yes, I will go out with you, Sybil. I thought she was talking about me. No. Oh, the fact that they're letting me ask it again. Oh, God. So I need to find someone who's tall, experienced, ex whatever, fucking older. Could you find dates for Max and me? Seriously? I mean, sure. Why not? Stranger things have happened, I guess. They must have. Somewhere. I'm choosing not to be offended by that. What do we need to do? It's easy. Just submit an application. Okay. What kind of stuff is on this application? The usual. Your best traits and what kind of person you're looking for. Hooks for hands! Hooks for hands! When you're done, I'll put the application into my computer, which analyzes your personality matrix at 15 essential compatibility points. I don't have a personality matrix so much as a personality vector. 
Mm. Once we've found a match, you call your date and agree on a time and place. Let me help you guys out. Tell me your good points and what you're looking for in a date. Uh... She should love animals. She should love animals. Such as the elusive praying mantis, whose deadly but enthralling mating rituals she mimics. You really know how to ruin the mood, Max. Oh, and cybernetic implants, like an elbow that can connect to the internet. The fuck? No. Uh... Air of mystery, she I guess? She should have an air of mystery. Making frequent passing mention to her time on the chain gang, but when pressed, revealing nothing. Love the outdoors. She should love the outdoors. We frequently lock ourselves out of the office. Uh, I'm very spiritual. A disciple of the ancient ones, enacting dark magic rituals to bring forth their reign again upon this earth. Rise, Shigarath. Rise, Abyag Solem. Okay. I lead an active lifestyle. I lead an active lifestyle. Always running from the authorities. Uh, you know what? Enough of this. That's all I can think of. Oh, that's plenty. Now I'll just put your applications into the computer. And there it is. Max, it says your perfect match is... Cybernetic laser eyes. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Well, that's interesting. It says your perfect match is Sam. Disturbing. And dun, yet somehow dun, dun. not completely unexpected. And Sam, your ideal soulmate is... Wait for it. Max. Well, there goes another blow to the concept of a fair and just universe. Hey, Sam, <laughs> you say we never ever speak of this again. Way ahead of you, little buddy. Yeah, except I already know I'm gonna have to free in. Ugh. I have to do this again somehow. I'm gonna just make a wild guess. I'm gonna find someone who's looking for a date, possibly the president, and I'm gonna need to take their interests. Which are probably going to be the same as what she's looking for. I don't know. What's next on the career horizon? What's next on the career horizon? Next? This is it. What could be a better job than helping people find their perfect match? Volcano God. Good point. Yeah. I'll stick to the dating business, though. Uh, how many matches have you made? How many couples have you managed to escort to romantic bliss? So far, none. None is the loneliest number. But I've got a feeling things will start to pick up after the holidays. All that stress makes for a lot of messy breakups. And a lot of people looking for romance on the rebound. So we have something to look forward to. So how's business? How's business? Slow right now, but those applications are going to start coming in at any moment. Okay, see you around, see you around Sybil. Alright, let's go check on Bosco. Jesus. All of these different things. Wait, tabloid and then RAO. I don't know what RAO is. Lefty's still gone. One day Lefty will come back. No, no, we're not going there. We're gonna go inside of our own place. See if we can find anything. Um. Whee! Anything on TV? My fellow Americans, we must remember to live life to the fullest and keep joy in our hearts. To that end, I have introduced mandatory psychological examinations to guarantee that all citizens meet the minimum required level of joy and goodwill. He's like a kinder, gentler Mussolini. I'm confused. Is... This is... Hold on. 
2017. Yeah, this was right when... This was right around the time that Barack was president. I, 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 the way he was talking sounded like, uh, what's it called? George W. Anybody Bush. Home? Of course he's not. not. But he has dark skin, so it makes me think that that might have been Barack. Leonard. It's our favorite shifty card cheat, Leonard Steak Charmer. How you doing, Leonard? Give me a scissors scan. Scissors. Give me a scissors. Here I come in. Good, good. We're just going to forget we ever saw that. And uh, go check on Bosco. What? Wait, what, what? Free home delivery? Hey, a free home delivery sign. Uh, the sign's not free, but... Oh, my book is! I was not expecting to see him Whoa, again. Look, Max, it's our favorite cultish crackpot, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I want to buy something! Take my credit card! Put me on your mailing list! Anyone you want me to recruit? You're supposed to give the Stockholm Syndrome a few days to kick in, Max. Who has that kind of time? What are you doing here? What's a big celebrity like you doing on our street, you bliss? Why, I'm spreading the great news about prismatology! The magic and science of unlocking the harmony of colors for a revolution in holistic personal and interpersonal well-being? Now translated into 15,000 different languages, including Esperanto. <laughs> Hooray! Um, Hooray! I, I don't think there's that many languages. Are the books selling well? Selling? You can't put a price on imagination. You can't sell the wonder of a daydream or the laughter of a child. He's right. I've tried. He is creepy. What was your book about again? Emetics, the handbook for multicolored happiness? It's about everything. And nothing at all. Oh. Uh, what? What's this prismatology nonsense really about? All it is is the total reawakening of mind, body, and spirit in a rainbow of true bliss. Ah. I'm really excited. Uh-huh. And how do we do that? Okay, simply focus on the orange at the core of your spirit. Okay, no, wait. Okay, now. Shift your consciousness to the ultraviolet. Doing that? Mix it with the indigo of your imagination, and then let it slide down the rainbow of your hopes and dreams. Wow, I can't believe it was so simple. Yeah. How do you stay in business? With the magic don't. volume and free delivery. You can have all the colors delivered to your home for no green. I don't get it. I I don't like this guy. I don't know why. He's kind of weird. Oh boy, here we go again with the magic trick. What's magic trick, you Bliss? Magic is easy when the colors of your soul are Yeah, yeah, less chatter, it. more magic. Okay, how about I disappear? Thank you. Well, your please. mind reading is obviously still working. It is. <laughs> now watch me as I vanish. Except you won't be able to watch me because I'll be gone. All right. Hey, a free home delivery sign. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Bliss. Hi. I'm Hugh Bliss. And... Okay. Stay colorful! I don't really know what else I was supposed to do. I, I took the sign. That works, I guess. Appoints action figure as Secretary of Defense. That is pretty crazy. 
Well, at least it was an action figure of John Shaft. Oh, I can dig it. I... Is John Shaft the first name of the guy that played Shaft? A non-mafia owned casino destroyed by mysterious explosion. Mysterious? I gave my name to reporters and even posed for pictures. Sometimes blowing something up is its own reward, pal. True. Oh god, what's in here now? Novelty gumballs. Shaped just like the real thing, but made of inedible plastic. Fool your friends, annoy your grandparents. Just put gumballs in there! Whee! All right, what's he dressed like now? Why shaking, Bosco? Ah, greetings, oh, you God. dog and rabbit. I'm having trouble placing the accent this month. Mid-Atlantic states? The San Fernando Valley? Hmm, I get more of a vague Baltic vibe. Something in a light check pattern. Ha <laughs> ha, comrade Maximilian makes the funny joke. I am Vladimir Ilyevich Boskovorsky. Russian proprietor of Workers' Glorious Warehouse of Inconvenience, no? No! But no. now I make new start in America, which I love. So it's no need to aim in sophisticated targeting equipment at me! Why Russian? What's with the Soviet bloc, Bosco? He's perfectly natural, comrade. I work with your American government in spirit of Glasnost. They know, they know! Who knows what? The feds, man! Uncle Sam! The government's watching us all the time. So that's why I always feel an overbearing presence just out of my field of vision, watching and judging my every move. That's me, Max. It's really fitting that of all the disguises for him to be wearing in the chapter involving an incompetent president... I swear, it's like Telltale saw into the future. Why is the government spying on you, Bosco? I don't know. Maybe it's because I know too much. Um... Just humor the poor guy, Max. But I make new start in America, which I love. So there's no need to target in me. Defense? I suppose you've got some ridiculously complex whirligig to defend yourself against the feds? He's the people, comrades. Workers will overthrow fascist regime. What about us loafers? All are welcome. Come day of victory, workers will unite to bring downfall of corrupt administration. We will number in tens of millions. That's a lot of Bolsheviks. No, he's all true. Plus, I'm working on a satellite missile defense system. A missile defense system. A missile defense system? Isn't that more than a little bit overkill? Yet! We are strong like bear against the pack! I'm working on modifying BTAS part D. Your anti-delivery system? That's right. It was already programmed to keep people from delivering goods to the store, so I just went into the database and changed beef jerky to intercontinental ballistic missiles. So now anyone can just deliver a blimp load of beef jerky to your store without fear of reprisal? It's small price to pay for freedom. I want beef jerky. What's that smell? Something in here smells like fermented hate. It's like sweaty jock straps soaked in boiled cabbage with a dash of sulfur. Keep it down, guys. You're scaring off the other customers. What other customers? What other customers? Max and I are always the only ones in here. It's good thing. Merchandise is always available. Coming in here is like visiting old friends. Some of these cereal boxes are from the McKinley administration. I carved our initials in one of the weenies, so we'll be best friends forever, Sam. You need some new weenies. When's the last time you cleaned out the weenie rotisserie? Needs no cleaning. Adds vintage flavor to tasty fresh. Oh. When's the last time you cleaned out the weenie? Needs no... Alright. This is probably one of my favorite things, is finding out what we need to buy for the episode, and then... Well, the whole... Montage. Da is evil but necessary private enterprise. What have you got? What do you got? His most glorious invention, comrade, is useful for, how you say, questioning. Questioning. His true serum makes easy, even mm. the most difficult, how you say, interrogation. Interrogation. True serum? 
Is this another one of your half-baked, overpriced gimmicks, or does it actually work? Both will make anyone get rid of inhibitions and telling, uh, how you say, uh, complete and honest truth. Your accent sucks. Hey, it's already working. Let's well, please don't be more than 10 million. We'd like that truth serum, Comrade Boscovich. Is good. Price is 867.5309 rubles. How much is that in real money? 100 million dollars. I think your rate of exchange is a little off, Boscovorsky. Fall of Berlin Wall brings great strength to our economy. I was starting to think that that number he gave was a number we needed to call, but no. 100 million. All right. Do you have any potatoes in the likeness of Catholic saints? Yet. Do you have any souvenir snow globes from the mystery vortex? Yet. Do you have any lobster fots brand cereal? Yet. Do you have any Tagalog rhyming dictionaries abridged? Yet. Do you have any wiener cozies? Da. We just get shipment of those in this week. Let me look. Oh boy. Wait. Did you say wiener cozy? I thought you said Navajo blankets. No, we're all out of wiener cozy. Do you have any Navajo blankets? Yet. Fuck you, Bosco! Do you have any potatoes in the likeness of Catholic saints? No. Yet. That was too short. Nothing for us right now. All right. So I need to find a way to get a hundred million something. That's gonna suck. Alright. See you later, Bosco. He's no Bosco, comrade. He's only loyal worker Boskovorsky, who is no threat to glorious American government whatsoever. Sure. Are these weenies beef or pork? Or woolly mammoth meat? He's one hundred percent all natural Sure. Um. Okay, so there's nothing really new. Chilled and preserved. I. I hope. I already know about all those. All right, let's. I don't know. We got the free sign. Huh. Where could we put... I don't have a clue. It's George Bush. In the upcoming elections, it's important to ask yourself, do you feel safer than you did three years ago? Or would you rather return to the days when crazed packs of robotic hyenas prowl the street, targeting their death ray laser eyes on you and on your children? I feel like that would be better times than now. Okay. 
Hey, it's all just repeating. Can we call anyone? Who are you calling, Sam? The White House? The White House. White House. Agent Super Bowl speaking. Oh my god. Have you checked the baby? Have you checked the baby? Yes, sir. Sleeping soundly. Oh, good job then. Oh, desk. The drawers are just painted on to make the desk seem useful. Fuck. Who are you calling, Sam? Uh, Mizza Pizza. Mizza Pizza. Two medium pineapple and asbestos pies, please. Oh, yeah? Well, same to you, jerk. What'd he say? Thank you, and have a nice day. Okay. Who are you? We're gonna call the White House again. The White House. White House. Hello, please hold. Hello, please hold. Roger that. Our phone bill is sure going to be expensive this month. It's okay, Max. I've been paying them out of your retirement fund. Hello. Is anyone there? <gasps> Who are you calling, Sam? Oh. Nobody. Nobody. I just like the way this phone feels in my hand. I thought I had something. All right, I'm gonna just kind of look around. I'll will come back if I find anything interesting. Who are you calling, Sam? I'm gonna try something again. I just tried walking around. I just went to the White House and I couldn't do anything differently. Uh, but the only the thing that did do something was please Hello, hold. Please hold. Our phone bill. It's okay. Hello. Is anyone there? So, I'm gonna try that. Because it did something. The phone stays off the hook. So it, it does something. And I'm gonna guess it's probably he's on the phone now at the White House. So let's go over to the White House. Take a look around. See if anything's different. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. He's like, oh, oh. Excuse me. Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. 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 Hmm? Is anyone there? Hey. It worked. Hello. Hello. This is the White House. Yeah, let's just go in the White House. Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. You'd think there'd Hello. be more than one person watching guard. Now, a lot of these same folks will say that we're wrong for introducing this federal pudding embargo. They envy our freedom. I ask you, what have they got to hide? Unless they're secretly sitting on stockpiles of pudding, and oh yes, we will find them. They've got nothing to be afraid of. So in conclusion, America, get your back up off the wall. Dance, come on, marzipan and good night. It's worse than we thought, Max. What? He's crazier than a caffeine-addled dingo in an Adelaide maternity ward. I think he makes a lot of good points. Those puddings are trying to steal our jobs. And I especially like how he does that spinny thing with his eyes. Now... Of course, more hit the whiskey soaked beard of Ulysses S. Grant. That's it. The president's not crazy. He's been hypnotized. We've got to snap him out of it, Max, and pronto. How do we do that again? We hit him over the head, like we do with all hypnotized people. Oh, yeah. That's not going to be so easy. Oh, no. Well, uh, what does it say? P pithy? It's a stack of pithy campaign slogans. Oh, don't fool with those. Wouldn't want to be caught on national TV with my drawers down. Again. Camera. Hands off the cameras. That is a fucking camera right there, though. Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell is a light for this room. Just as America is a light for... Yeah. Metaphor is such an ugly quality in furniture. Magazine. No, go all the way around to look at it. House of Representatives and Gardens. Ah, I thought it was going to let me start clicking on it or something. Star pillow. Hmm, throw pillows shaped like stars. 
Interesting, since actual stars are shaped more like throw pillows. Yeah. Nutcracker Washington. Hi, I'm George Washington. Anyone need their nuts cracked? <laughs> Please don't make fun of George Washington. Why is there a presidential rat hole? Picture. Are these pictures of you with cardboard cutouts of other presidents? We're all cardboard under the skin, son. Funny how almost anything makes sense if a president says it. Yeah. I haven't talked to Max today. I guess I'll talk to him later because he doesn't want to be near me. Alright, let's go here. Hands off, boy! That's my presidential calendar! Okay. Trophy. U.S. Senate talent show, second place. My finest hour. Sad. I'm not sure who this is, but he must be important. Nah. Apparently, even U.S. presidents have mothers. Yeah? Is that a potted plant, or the vice president of the United States? It is hard to tell the difference. I don't get that one. This is either an early draft of the Declaration of Independence, or a crude map of Lithuania. Sure. Whatever that means. Roosevelt's Box boxing gloves, encased in lucite. TR or FDR? ER, I think. <laughs> uh, war room door? No one enters the war room. That's it. You two are coming with me. Oh. And stay out. Hello. Now I have to get back to the president. Hello. He's not supposed to be alone. Excuse me. Hello. No. Oh, welcome, Governor Wizard. President no. has been waiting for you. Is anyone Governor Wizard? Hey, who better to run a state than a washed up Hello. urination loving former child star? No one. Hello, this is the White House. Okay, let's go back in. Hello. Because I still have people to talk to. Hello. Do not click no, on the sir. war room. I said soda abuse. It's a very important issue. Was I? No comprende, son. But I'm speaking English. Ah, oh, are, are you two fellas the interpreters? It's about time. Darndest thing, we just had a couple imposters in here. Dead ringers for you two. Were they walking around examining everything and engaging everyone in pointless conversations? Those are the ones. Those accursed clones. <laughs> when will their devilish mimicry end? Help me out with this here potentate, will you? I don't understand a dang word. But that doesn't make sense. I don't even have an accent. Oh, no. Momento, por favor. Impatient little guy, ain't he? Yeah. All right, well, I clicked on pretty much everything. Let's actually, you know... Oh, it's Chuckles. Hey, man. Do you work here? What tipped you off? We're freelance police, buddy. This is a national emergency. And we don't appreciate your sassy mouth. Auditions for new White House pet are down the hall. This can only end in violence. Hmm, this guy's voice sounds familiar. Do you recognize him, Max? Half the time I don't even recognize you, Sam. I'm over here, little buddy. Who said that? Jeez. You seem familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? Yeah. I'm that voice in the back of your head that tells you to mind your own business. The veiled threats, the surly tone. I've got it. You're that pit boss from the Toy Mafia. I smell a conspiracy. You smell a nosy dog who's going to get smacked if he don't stop asking questions. Yeah. What's the Toy Mafia got to do with the Secret Service? What Toy Mafia? Oh, he's good, Sam. The Orso Nostra, the sacred organization you inducted me and Max into in a time-honored ceremony. The one that we infiltrated, repeatedly duped, and then blew up in a fiery explosion of death and property damage. I was going to casually forget to mention that part, Max. That's a very entertaining story, Chowderheads. Now, run along and play whilst I protect the leader of our country. I suspect foul play. I think somebody may have hypnotized the president while you weren't looking. You, perhaps. <laughs> you, perhaps. Funny. What do you do around here? I give out free t-shirts to the visitor who asked the dumbest question of the day. Please accept my apologies, but we're all out of Husky Boys sizes. Woo! 
double burn! I thought you were on my side, Max. I just call him like I see him, Sam. You're the president's personal bodyguard? You catch on quick. We need to have a private meeting with the president, national security. Go right ahead. I meant private, as in wait outside and we'll call you when we need you. And national security, as in we need to clobber the president on the head to break his hypnotic trance. Your gift for subterfuge is uncanny, Max. And that's uncanny as in you two try anything and I'll plug you. You're always with the president? Even when he's got a, you know... Always. I never leave his side. Your codependency sickens me. And it sickens me in exactly the same way, doesn't it, Max? I mean, Sam. Hmm. What's behind that door? It's a private club for people who aren't annoying me. You two ain't invited. Should we pummel him together, Sam, or would you rather take turns? We can create a national security incident after we've saved the president, Max. Yeah. Seriously, pal, what's behind that door? It's the door to the war room, with unrestricted access to the United States' entire arsenal of long-range missile weapons. There's no part of that sentence I didn't like. Then it's unanimous. We'd like a tour. Nobody gets into the war room during peacetime. Stay away from it, or I'll have to escort you out. Yeah, I kind of learned that. We'll be back. I cannot wait. All right. Oh, let's talk about the Stand national back, budget. Stand back, son! That there's the national budget. Uh, sure. Good day, Mr. President. We come in peace, as far as you know. <laughs> oh, finally! The interpreters. Where have you been? Uh... You're under arrest. Freelance police, you're under arrest. Freelance police? Now there's the kind of can-do vigilante attitude that makes America strong. Finally, someone who appreciates our greater calling. Seriously, you're under arrest. Seriously, you're under arrest. <laughs> oh, you can't arrest me. Foolish chief executive, does he not fear us? Trust us, Mr. President, it's for your own good. Nah, see, it's the Secret Service regulations. I can't leave the Oval Office. You're still under arrest. You're still under arrest. We can get your administration back on track with just a hint of bloodshed if you'll just... Where does the little one keep his gun? Best not to think about it, sir. Okay. Let's just do the interpreter. We're ready to interpret for you. All right, let's get this party started. <laughs> Mr. President, my fellow Americans, I come to warn you about a serious epidemic facing our country. The scourge of soda abuse. Many former popheads like myself found ourselves in the endless cycle of addiction and elimination until we believed there was no hope. I don't know what you're saying, son, but you're selling it, boy. Good job. I ask you, how long can this epidemic continue? What was that? He said... Oh. Prepare to die, capitalist oppressor. Are you trying to pick a fight with me, son? No, I'm just trying to educate you on a very important issue. What did he say? We will lay waste to your cities and dance upon the bones of your children. I think I've heard just about enough. Soda abuse is a difficult topic, sir. But if you'll just hear me out... Beg for your life and I will kill you last. Wait a second. I heard that. That's not what I said at all. What was that? <laughs> it uh, loses something in the translation. Let's start over from the top. <clears throat> Once again, Mr. President, the impact of soda abuse okay. on our nation's health cannot be overstated. I ask... Great okay. job, great job. What do you say? He said... All right. How long can, How this, long epi can this epidemic... Epidemic? What's this about an epidemic? The epidemic of soda abuse, sir. By 2010, four out of five children will be addicted to soda. 
and the impact on our nation's plumbing system will be disastrous. What was that? No. Uh, listless teens, baseball fears, something about soda abuse, blah, 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 whatever. The epidemic of surly listless teens. That is a problem. I blame those video games. What does that have to do with anything? I think he's confused. Let's start again from the top. Oh. Where was I? Oh, right. Soda. <sighs> How long can this epidemic continue? Come again? He said. How long can this oh, epidemic there continue? There you go, about an ep- Denying the problem won't make it go away, Mr. President. What was that? Something about soda abuse. Something about soda abuse, blah, blah, whatever. Hmm. Sounds like one of them touchy-feely tax and spend welfare programs. He said, hmm, sounds like one of those- I heard what he said. Are you guys sure you're translating correctly? Don't blame us, buddy. You're the one with the speech impediment. Try it again from the top, wizard. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, right. Soda abuse. How long can this epidemic continue? Come again? He said. Your reign of terror Your ends reign of terror ends today. Those are fighting words, boy. But soda abuse is a very serious problem. What was that? Uh, don't you realize I've always loved don't you? Don't you realize that I've always loved you? Oh, well, I'm flattered, son, but I'm afraid it wouldn't work out between us. What are you talking about? Is he taking it well? Buck up, wizard. There'll be other presidents. I don't understand. They're confused, wizard. Try it again from the top. Where was I? Oh, right. Soda. Okay. How long? Come again? I'm going to be said. serious about this. How long Epidemic. Can this... There you go. About... Denying the problem. What was that? Baseball fever? Baseball fever. It's sweeping the nation. You said it, son. The crack of the bat, the roar of the crowd. But you know my favorite part? The frosty cold sodas. Are you mocking me, Mr. President? Try it again from the top, wizard. Where was I? Oh, right. <sighs> Soda. How long? Come again? He said. Okay. What's a guy gotta do to get a drink? What's a guy gotta do to get a drink around here? Aha! Uh -huh. I know what you need. An ice cold orange sugar fizz. I swear by it. No! That's not what I want at all. I must resist. But I am thirsty, and just one couldn't hurt. Frosty cold and so delicious. All the progress I've made. They were about to give me my five-week pin. I almost feel bad about this. I don't have a conscience, Sam. What's your excuse? I just want this to be over with. <laughs> and oh, he's got a pee. Blessed angels of carbonation. Fill me with your syrupy nectar. Ew. Yeah, now I'm not so much guilty as repulsed. Keep it coming. More! I need more! I need... I need a bathroom! Which way is the bathroom? Uh... Which way is... Uh... Let's try that. Which way is the war room? It's that door right over there! But I don't... Oh, thank you! Where do you think you're going? I've got to get in there! Bad! We've got a priority red number two here in the Oval Office. No, it's just number one. Escorting the suspect to holding cell for interrogation? Come with me, sir. But it'll oh. only take a second. That worked. Please, Lovely. Let me go. That was fun. Okay, now I didn't catch all that. What did he say? Um. He said this. Now it's time for some checks and balances, freelance police style. Max, will you do the honors? Gladly. Look it, fellas. My fingertips look like little tadpoles. Ow! They just don't make these guys like they used to. That's no guy, Max. It's a damned ugly puppet. Ah, the drawstring in his back should have been our first clue. Our first clue should have been the swirly eyes. But, silly me, I thought hypnotizee, not hypnotizer. What? 
Yes, an ingenious device being used to hypnotize the TV watching public. But who was controlling him? Gonna take days to get that smell out of the interrogation room. What? What have you done? He was like that when we got here. Sam did it! <laughs> <laughs> so these two numbskulls managed to off the president. It was a deep tissue massage gone horribly wrong. Ninjas! Sam did it! Still, ratings from the last State of the Union address were even lower than reruns of Midtown Cowboys. I didn't expect to have to replace the president so soon. Now that these idiots have forced my hand... Uh, we're standing right here. We can hear everything you're saying. It's time for a leader that people will have to listen to. Agents Jackson, Burr, and Degambe, we are moving the timeline forward. Commence phase two of the operation. I'll prepare the new candidate. Abe Lincoln. We finally get to the point of the, the name of the episode. Not quite the reaction I would have expected from a Secret Service agent discovering two people over the decapitated body of the President. What do you think this fake body is made of? Can I keep it? No time for that now, Max. We've got to stop the... Wait, what's that noise? No! Blessed scuba diving Buddha on a banana boat with cocktail onions and a map to the stars' homes. Yeah! They've reanimated America's most beloved president. I always thought Taft was shorter. Not Taft, you deficient. My fellow Americans, I am Abraham Lincoln. As you know by now, your president was recently murdered by two mysterious interpreters. But turn not to fear and despair. I have returned to guide us through this troubled time. A vote for me is a vote for Abraham Lincoln. I'll get it! <laughs> uh, Lincoln Memorial. Right. Hydraulic motors and robotic implants. Yes. Okay. I see. We're on it. Wrong number? That was the commissioner, Max. If this new Mecha Lincoln wins the emergency Mecha Lincoln. election, the nefarious forces controlling him will have unchecked power to destroy the entire free world. I hate when they do that. That's why one of us is going to have to run against him. You got to answer the phone. Okay, fair's fair. Max, we're going to make you the next president of the United States. I'd yes. vote for him. Ah! Ah! Uh, there's an extra star. Okay, um, what do I click on? Uh, no, whatever. Let's just, um, come on, go to the fucking podium! Fuck okay, it, talk to Lincoln. Mr. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Hmm, I see. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware, I'm the most beloved president in history. So I just assumed I'd be running unopposed. Oh, no, you didn't. You ain't all that. I freed the slave. I was star of a popular television sitcom. I'm on the penny. I was on TV. Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through moderate reasoned debate. Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring it. And it's a beautiful day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. President. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the random violence and destruction party, there is the hyperkinetic rabbit-like creature known as Max. Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates are ready, so let's listen in. This is making me want to do two things. It makes me want to watch uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, or Slayer. I can't remember which one it was. Because I heard that was a really good movie. And it makes me want to play Hell Yeah, uh, which is a Metroidvania game where you play as a crazy rabbit. I think I have that game, too. I should check to see if it's any good. Maybe we'll see a series of that soon. 
Let's talk about the issues. Mr. Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. Very well. How do you solve the problem of toxic How do you plan waste? to solve the problem of toxic waste? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. And Lincoln is once again using his trusted campaign slogan, which is pleasing the crowd, but having no effect on his poll ratings. So how do you plan on- How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? I'm glad that I've been given- And Lincoln is back on his poll ratings. Okay. Where do you stand on religion and schools? Where do you stand on religion and schools? I'm glad that I've oh been given God. one more life to give for my country. Lincoln pulls out his trusted catchphrase for this election, which delights the crowd, but seems to have no effect on the poll. How would you describe your tax plan? How would you describe your tax plan? I'm glad oh that my I... Oh my God. And Lincoln dodges the question by pulling out his trusty campaign slogan, polls. Okay, let's talk to Max. Greetings, miserable proles. I'm here to save the people country. of Earth. Your day of reckoning is at hand. This election reminds me of a droll story. It seems Chester A. Arthur and the Pope were kayaking down the Amazon one day. Suddenly, a tiny kandiru fish swims up the Pope's and lodges itself in his Arthur grabs the Pope's pliers and uh... swelled up like a melon. And the Pope says, thanks. Last time that happened, McKinley wanted a No, wait, wait, wait. I think I told it wrong. I'm a uniter, not a divider. I foresee an America under one rule, an iron-fisted rule. One rabbit. One law. Let your neighbors know that dissent will not be tolerated. All hail Max. I'm so confused. I have a dream. I have a dream, America. It starts out where I'm in an all nude production of Death of a Salesman on Ice, but I haven't studied and I can't remember my lines. Suddenly, it begins to rain marshmallows, but that's okay because trees are made of graham crackers and chocolate bars are the official currency. I believe that by working together, we can make that dream a reality. So you'd be eating the money. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And the chupacabra, madre de Dios, he'll kill us all. Okay, um... Uh... Okay, let's... How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? I'm glad that... Okay, so and let him Lincoln talk. On his poll and then to answer that... I believe this? in the ideal of a global community where America is but a small part we must set aside our differences and work with our fellow nations, all united towards one goal. The complete and utter annihilation of the godless Belgians. That is all. Stay frosty, America. I... I don't... I don't know. It's going to be hard to improve your ratings in the polls. I already showed them how I can wrap my lower lip around my entire head. What more do these people want? They want to vote for Lincoln. Then we should fix that. Yeah. It's going to be hard to improve your ratings in the polls. I already showed them how I can... I they want to vote for the Lincoln. Then we should fix that. Lincoln's really impressed the people with his family values platform. He should stop being such a stick in the mud and get out and live a little. Lincoln is really winning the crowd on the issues. The voters don't care about issues. They just turn off their brains and go crazy for Lincoln's stupid campaign slogan. Jealous? Very. Hmm. Okay, let's go. All right, uh, cue cards. I wanted to click on the it's first It's the cue cards for Lincoln's speech. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. 
Let's try... Free home delivery. And let's try again. Really? Why are you walking all the way over there when I clicked on the... Okay, so I have to click on Lincoln. It's time for another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Okay. Mr. Lincoln, the networks are looking for a soundbite. Would you care to share a few words with us? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House. We make America great again. Of the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I said basically the same thing. Um. Okay. Do you have any? Mr. Lincoln, perhaps you'd like to speak about the importance of family values. Of course. A strong family unit is the rock upon which our society is built. It's easy today in this age of your blinged out horseless carriages and racy daguerreotype magazines to believe that honesty and fidelity are outdated concepts. But I stand proud. I have been completely faithful to my lovely wife, Mary Todd, for over seven score years. I've never even looked at another woman. Are you sure you have family Mr. values? Mr. Lincoln, could you elaborate on your stand on family values? Without a strong, honest, and faithful family, we are all nothing. I myself have been faithful to my wife for over 150 years. Okay, let's talk about Contestants, the it's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing prepared. Okay, let's see if this changes things now. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? Free home delivery. Ooh, an effective but very controversial proposal from candidate Lincoln. And the crowd did not like that idea one bit. <laughs> Let's see how it affected the polls. Okay. Okay, I think I have an idea. So that was probably the right thing to say there, but let's do that again. Okay, yeah. I feel like I need to find other signs, because I feel like home delivery Where do you is not... stand on religion and schools? Free home delivery. And that doesn't really make a bit of sense. So it looks like it's politics as usual here at the debate. Okay. Um, that's enough for now. That's enough for now. Keep them coming. I'm ready for anything. Time, Time out. out. Max has to, uh, visit the little candidate's room. I'm drunk with power, but it just goes right through me. So, that sign is not... I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Two wrongs don't make a right. Free home delivery. All right, let's try the... I'm glad that I've been given one more life. Let's try that one. Two wrongs don't make a right. Let's see if that works for anything. Talk about the issues. Uh... Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make a right. 
Did we hear that right? Lincoln just came down against both religion and education. Wow, that's gotta hurt him in the polls. Okay. Nader. I don't know who Nader is. Alright, um... So we gotta find another sign. Your name here for naming rights to this building. No. Oh boy. We'll see, little. All right. Whee! I'm gonna take a look around while I look for that last sign. If I find something, I'll let you guys know. But I'm gonna end this episode here. So next episode, we're gonna continue the campaign against Lincoln. See ya. Bye bye.